but I was watching or listening to rather as I worked slash watching 83 weeks or part of me was wise choices. Sorry. With a uh, special guest, Kevin Kelly. And um, as you see, I have the timestamp queued up. I have actual timestamps. I stamps. Pardon me. I did my homework for you guys this time. Yeah. 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 Uh, I made sure I had timestamps. And so at 49 minutes, basically, Kevin Kelly, the first thing I wanted to bring to the show is he he talks about Okada and they were talking about New Japan and how you taking Okada away from them really hurt them. But Kevin Kelly goes into great uh, shout out Eric Bischoff. Go and check out, subscribe to their channel if you're not. Um, obviously, Eric Bischoff, one of the goats, would love to have a crossover at one point uh, with him. And shout out Kevin Kelly. I got a lot of heat on X for sticking up for him. And I've defended him against people going, oh, he's a QAnon conspiracy. Thera. You couldn't regurgitate more dumb, dumb, like what the media came out and said. This one movie. It's so funny how Hollywood, I'm not going to get all political and weird, but Hollywood's got a real problem with uh, child people. You guys know what I'm saying? p 3 dos right? Like there's a problem there with that. And then they project it onto the rest of society. And there's a problem with um, them like protecting people like that. And there is, dude. So we, we we don't have to argue. The evidence is there. And so this movie came out called, I forget what it's called, Silence of the Lambs. I forget what it's called. The Silence or something. He'll say it. And and so people wrote Kevin Kelly off. And Ian Riccoboni buried Kevin Kelly. And people say this. They call him like a, a Donald Trump conspiracy theorist. Because he went and saw a movie and like did a giveaway for free tickets to this movie that Hollywood doesn't like because it's a movie based on a true story. I guess, I don't know, I didn't see it, but he, I guess, saw it and now every, it's like a conspiracy movie, I guess. If you go see this movie, you love Trump or something. I don't know. So Kevin Kelly got written off. He had a problem. He'll tell you all about it. And he's actually suing AEW. And he exposes a lot about AEW here. And uh, I'm not bringing this up to hate, but it's because no one's talking about it. Okay? So I'm going to talk about it. That's why you don't want to miss goddamn Pro Wrestle Times podcast. I keep saying it, but it's got to be said. Okay? So Kevin Kelly, I took a lot of heat too for standing up for him on X and just going, look, man, this is like, this is a legend. They kept Excalibur fire Kevin Kelly. You know, no one's as good as, as Kevin Kelly at this. I'm so sorry. He's one of the best. Oh, you mean, and then they all turn on him. Oh, you mean the old fat guy who, this is what people are spotting, who are botching names? Man, you, you know? So Kevin Kelly, he talks to Eric Bischoff. Shout out Wise Choices. Love both of these gents. Would love to chop it up with them some point. Fingers crossed manifesting. But yeah, uh, right here at 49 minutes. 49 awful's age no i'm just kidding i have no idea <laughs> awful ain't even on the show this week he's catching strays big announcement with awful and phil coming soon but yeah 49 minutes in they talk about okada uh leaving new japan and sort of how it affected new japan and and what that says is okay so let's be patient and let's be smart but uh as you can tell i get passionate talking about this because these are the things that you know, we would be on the bus and we'd be talking about because the boys themselves would see how the business was changing. And it's like, we need to be doing this and we need to be doing that. Um, they didn't listen to us, but, you know, now they're forced to. Okada's departure changed everything because that's losing. That's losing your home run hitter. That's losing the great Muda. That's losing, you know, that would be WCW losing Hulk Hogan. He's that he meant that much to the promotion at this stage of the game. So, again. They'll get it back. They have the right people in charge. It's just going to take time. Let's get to a couple more questions here. Travis Mid. So, you know, they felt a big blow when, o when Okada left. And, uh, yeah, dude, for everyone saying, like, he working with New Japan is so great. No, dude, they scrubbed them of a bunch of their talent, and they made them foot the bill to do these co-promotion shows because New Japan's trying to get their stuff popping in America, and it's not... You know, they're not doing aw terribly, but it's just not, like, transcending the way they hoped it would. And, yeah, man, if I'm New Japan, I'm just getting far away from AEW. But they're in too deep now, you know, and they don't want to lose that connection to, like, Okada and these guys. So it's kind of sad, man. It is actually sad.
and um, the almighty dollar. It speaks a lot. Pardon me there. But um, at 108 in the program, Kevin talks about his time in AEW. This is very, very compelling stuff. No one's talking about it. Shout out Eric Bischoff because... I'm so happy he's getting into this like space. And so here's Kevin Kelly. He talks about his time, man, in AEW. And this is all quite, man, no one's talking about this. Like no dirt sheets are babbling about. It's so weird to me that this is pretty intense. And I think this came out like two days ago. No one's talking about it. You're going to hear it here first on PWT. And then everyone else is going to pick up on it later. But here we go. Here's Kevin Kelly. Well, you hear heard it first on Wise Choices, but. You want to see someone get outraged? An outrage channel. I'm outraged, folks. And so is Kevin Kelly. So let's see. Let's see what he what happened here. Or Instagram of wrestling wants to know why did you leave WWE, Kevin? It was a financial thing. They they were losing money. Sorry, we're at the oh I I botched it. Liar! It wasn't 108. God damn it. Here, it'll be it'll be soon here. Honey, uh, Steve quits and rock goes to hollywood and business starts to peter out and the invasion didn't work and they lost a ton of money in the xfl about your time in aew here we go well started a year ago and and how it began was me contacting tony khan um in fact i just saw tony khan a photo memory from a picture i had taken in haneda airport uh did a selfie a little quick post you know, hey, heading home after an, a wonderful time in Dominion, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was there that Tony and I had reached out to Tony just to see if he needed me or was thinking of using me for the upcoming Forbidden Door, the, the New Japan new collab. Uh, he got back to me and said, I want to talk to you. I want to find out what your schedule is. Okay. Uh, so I said, well, I'm going to be home these weeks, but then I'm going back and I'm doing the G1. So that's five weeks. And then after that, I'll be going back in September. And then so we set up the call. And what he wanted was more than just one. He wanted me to be the announcer on collision. So he's like, I'm going to, we're going to, we're like, are you wanting me for the Forbidden Door show? I'm going to come work for you for Forbidden Door if you want me. Tony goes, yeah, this will be great. Actually, I want you to be like the head guy on collision. And it's going to be punk show and it'll be great. Okay. The new show that was starting up. And it's okay. Um, and it, Gave me the money, and and I was already kind of like getting a little weary of these Japan trips, you know. Take a lot like out of you. Yeah, eight years, and it's a long time. So it was financially good. It was figured schedule wise, it was great. You know, living in this, living back home, and flying out once a week to go do TV. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Sounds fun. New show, CM Punk. Let's go. So that was how it started. What happened? Everything was fine. Everything's going along just great. And then a couple of weeks in, like. It it was a personal thing with me and Ian Riccoboni of all people, you know. So this is important here. Ian Riccoboni of all people. I love Ian. I like his commentary. He ain't over with me really anymore after hearing this. Now, this is his side of it, but apparently he's going to talk about stuff that Riccoboni said in a Discord server. So that means there's receipts. And uh, I'm willing to believe Kevin Kelly over Ian Riccoboni. Because why would Kevin Kelly, if it's in, if it's written down, you guys will hear about it. There's obviously receipts and there's a lawsuit coming of all of this. So clearly, you know, so I'm going to believe Kevin Kelly. And I don't, I mean, that's, I think Rick Abani's an idiot if this is true. I think he's super dumb if this is true. Here we go. A personal mm -hmm. thing with me and Ian Rick Abani of all people, you know, the ROH announcer. I just happened to be, after getting home from the, G1 and jet lag that I go online and I always followed the new Japan board on discord because I always wanted to know what the people were saying. And I interacted with some of the people from time to time and it was fun. And I, he's on there just hammering me or the discord link below the new Japan board on discord because I always wanted to know what the people were saying. And I interacted with some of the people from time to time and it was fun. And I, he's on there just hammering me or just hammering me. And I couldn't believe it. And what set it, what set me off was that, uh, you know, and he was like, oh, Kevin did this and Kevin did this to me personally. I thought we were friends. Uh, and then the last thing he says is, but where I really, uh, you know, couldn't take anymore was when he's, when he began promoting a QAnon conspiracy theory movie. Instantly. Like, wait, what? And like, this is your friend, dude. 
And he's like in the Discord saying publicly, oh, he supports a QAnon conspiracy theory movie. Like, come on, man. That's f because I went to see The Sound of Freedom. The and Sound I of Freedom. Get... What was I saying? The Silence. The Sound of Silence. The Sound of Silence. You got to be kidding me. Isn't that that? Yeah, dude. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, that's the Simon and Garfunkel. The sound of silence. Oh, my goodness, dude. That's so funny. The sound of I was like, the silence. He'll tell you the name. The sound of freedom. That's what it's called. Tickets for free? Uh, it's about child trafficking. How could anybody be against child trafficking? Well, apparently it's a QA. He 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 doesn't mean that too. He just misspoke. How could anyone be against child trafficking? He didn't mean that. He meant like, how could anyone be against like the child trafficking awareness and like people you know what i mean because this movie apparently they made it like years ago and then it couldn't get in the theaters right um i'm a script writer so i hear about all this i never saw it i don't i can't remember who's in it either it's like the guy who played jesus in the mel uh, gibson movie is in it or whatever and they made it like years ago and no one in hollywood would pick it up and that's all i'm saying like hey that's all i'm saying right we talked about it before we don't but kind of weird um if you want to go yeah the x file yeah they're, they're the black helicopters but like I, just to say that about your friend and then over a movie like it's a movie it's a fake movie that's based on a true story so those are always fake anyways you know so it's not like this real it's not like a documentary yeah made by Infowars and we're like it wasn't that it wasn't kevin kelly like was giving free tickets to like it's a hollywood movie like fox produced it or something it, like disney owned it when they merged with fox or whatever either way it's a movie okay it was made by real actors and professional hollywood people okay so anyways let's move along put on a conspiracy theory movie eric i don't know if you knew that and uh so yeah so that really pissed me off i thought we were friends so i That's contacted funny. him by the way ian if you're listening to this you're weird oh, let's go eric let's go <laughs> Oh, oh come on now eric that's not oh come on now eric that's not very fair to say about ian riccaboni eric he's a great announcer for aew i mean if if ian riccaboni and aew are healthy then that makes for a good wrestling business eric that's not very fair oh come on now eric it's not very fair to say ian riccaboni's weird what does weird mean anyways eric and might I interest you in some health insurance while you're at... Oh, come on now, Eric. You know that QAnon's not right. Come on now, Eric. You know in Alabama we don't like QAnon. You know you know, Ian Riccoboni's quite all right, Eric. Come on, if, if AEW's healthy, Eric. That, oh, come on now, Eric. You're going to call him weird? Oh, oh, boy. Weird. And the people just, that think like you are weird. Yeah, so just, there's that. And, and so now I'm, I find myself like, you know, anytime I would post something on Twitter, hey, I'm promoting this cool thing. Oh, you're just a cons QAnon conspiracy theorist. Wait a minute. It's coming from. So now, you know, it was the dog whistle, right? So now all the other uh, loonies are coming out of the woodwork. And yeah, the sickos, the great. And so I, I had messaged him. and was like, hey, I thought we were friends. What's going on? Oh, you really you really insulted me one too many times. I was like, I didn't remember insulting you at all. I thought we were friends. I don't even know this guy, but I'm going to wake up every morning trying to figure out a new way to insult him. Oh, jeez. Eric, just that smirk on his face. Oh, my goodness. I love him. I love Uncle E. In front of each other's baseball teams and each other all the time. How is this? Anyway, so I'm like, well, I'll just get over it. And I'm talking to my peers. And I'm like, hey, has Ian ever said anything to you? No, no, but you guys will work it out. Yeah, I think we will work it out. And it, we don't work it out. So I'm, I'm, if time's going on, I'm getting more and more annoyed about it. And I called HR. And I was like, hey, I might be making a bigger deal out of this than it really is, but I'm going to just tell you something. And you let me know if you think I should bring it up to you guys. Like, if, is it actionable? Is it something I should talk to HR about? Or is it just personality conflict? And I explained the whole situation. And they said, no, it sounds like an HR issue. Okay, I'm going to sit on it. I'm not going to do anything now. Now we get to about November and I'm so an H now remember the boys as well. Okay. The boys talked about this. Okay. They didn't lay it out as good as Kevin Kelly, but there was issues with communication with travel, HR, people don't get back to you. Tony Khan doesn't know if he paid for CM Punk's thing, but if he did, he'll reimburse him. 
Like all of these things, man. Oh, travel, leave CM Punk at Wembley. Come on, man. Like it's not, oh, AEW hater. It's not that. It's just, if this is, if they, this was coming out about a, name a place, right? Name a store. What's a, a Texaco, a 7-Eleven. I don't know. If this was happening at a Walmart, we would all go, dude, this Walmart's up. Like what's going on? What? Like, you know, God damn it. And they're not putting a good show on. So they're ignorant backstage and the product. Well, it just seems like it's lousy people operating things. No, no. Like, come on, guys. Here's what changed. They throw Tony Schiavone in as the in the booth. And Tony takes my spot as the playback player. So listen to this. Kevin Kelly go. This is crazy, you guys. This is why you're tuned into PWT. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Listen to this. He goes to HR like, yo, this is weird, you know? Like, some guys call me QAnon. I thought we were friends and blah, 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 blah. Personal thing, whatever. Go to HR, though. Like, is there is this something I should bring up? Like, should this be known? There could be a conflict. You know, I just want to cover my bases, right? All of a sudden, they move him off of commentary and put Shivani as the lead commentator on Collision doing his job after he goes to HR with a problem. It's weird, huh? It seems like anyone who has any sort of problem with AEW gets ostracized, gets picked on, gets kicked out, gets things said about them, gets weirdo bots, rumors, all of these. So you mean to tell me that Tony Khan and everyone, everyone running things there are perfect, are absolutely perfect. And earlier in the show, we, we looked at Triple H and he discusses, no, we butt heads. And I wanted him to realize this. And he had to do his own thing to realize this when talking about punk, right? Triple H is like, yeah, no. Like, it's not just everything's great. We're the safest. Everything's the best. And then it comes out that dudes are being fired after going to HR with real issues, by the way. And also, you know, uh, people are hiding injuries and you're saying it's the safest company. Like Triple H is going, no, yeah, I own up to that. This is a way different place. And he's a different person and I'm a different person. And I saw this in him, but I was wrong the way I communicated it then. And maybe he was wrong too. And yeah, he rubs people the wrong way, but he's here. He's not doing that here. He's making a great difference. It's great to have him here. Okay. Instead of no, it's all great. And everyone loves each other. It's rainbows and happy and cookies and sugar and spice and everything nice. Yeah. You know, like it's not, it's, it's soda water. Oh, this is great. Everything's a real awesome time. Yeah, we're so safe. It's, you know, it's none of that, dude. It's in WWE, they're owning up to the. So just think about how crazy this is. Like, you're crazy at this point if you think that all of this, like, mishandling. Oh, but WWE had the guy who ran the whole thing and could cook the books and only Vince who kayfabed everyone and people only ever knew what he wanted them to know in his company. You mean he was doing crazy sex behind closed doors, got caught and, and was using company money and everybody sitting there like with egg on their face going, well, you made us all look like assholes. Like that's what happened. That's what happened over there. And now the culture is completely different. We've seen it happen in just a short while. Okay. In AEW, we're seeing it progressively get worse and worse and worse and worse. Okay. Punk got bullied out of the company. Kevin Kelly had said about him that was entirely untrue or entirely misinformed at the very least. And he was bullied out of the company. He had his job replaced when he went to HR with a problem. So Everybody who has some sort of issue gets buried, disappears, and you can tell how it goes. They bring it up backstage, and when no one does about it backstage and it doesn't get taken seriously, they get loud about it in public, and then they get publicly shamed for it. And I'm glad Kevin Kelly said, no, you, I'm going to sue you. And no, you, I'm going to speak NDA. I'm going to speak about this publicly. Shout out, Kevin Kelly. Sorry, guys. I am very... I'm very passionate about this here, but let's go. And they said, no, it sounds like an HR issue. Okay, I'm going to sit on it. I'm not going to do anything now. Now we get to about November and I'm, here's what changed. They throw Tony Schiavone in as the, in the soda water booth. And Tony takes my spot as the play by play. So I slide over to the third chair. I'm the only announcer to not call any matches on the pay-per-views. Like, 
I would show up and I'd be dressed and I'm ready to go and the announcer assignments come out. I'm the only one to not be on there. I'm starting to take this personally. And I'm starting to wonder if there's a connection between with what Ian said. Again, a certain sector of the fan base, being what they are, think that I'm a QAnon conspiracy wacko because I supported a film that talked about the horrors of child trafficking. Um, And now I talk to HR. It's November. And I lay the whole case out. I send them all the screenshots. Okay, we'll take care of it. December, January, nothing. Hey, by the way, HR, did you guys ever do anything with that Ian thing I sent you? Um, Yeah, we took care of it. The disciplinary committee met and it's taken care of. Okay, what happened? Well, we can't tell you because it's private. Okay, I get that, but I was the victim. Oh, well, sorry. So now I don't get any relief and I don't know what happened. Nothing changed. He didn't, he wasn't fired and that wasn't my goal. I kind of just wanted an apology and to be able to move on. And I also wanted to know, is this affecting my, the perception of me within the walls of the company? So he's worried like on a personal level, like publicly that because now that's out there and it's completely unwarranted. And then he's sitting there thinking to himself, well, HR is not getting back to me. Like, I just want to make sure that no one's talking about me like this in the company and like actively like, imagine you go to work and everyone's just talking behind your back and like, that's clown. So yeah, he's. You, we all can understand he's probably feeling anxiety. He's probably, there's some prob- probable depression, some taken off guard. Like, I thought we were friends. We're in a group text. We make fun of each other's baseball teams. Like, why would you do this? So, yeah, let's let Kevin continue to talk. And I'm talking to Mike Bansuri, the executive producer, co-executive producer with Tony Khan. Oh, the co-executive producer. I'm the executive producer and the CEO and the COO. And, uh, well, Mercedes Monet can be the CEO, too. She's really great. Yeah, she lets me sit on her lap, tells me stories at bedtime. This is great. And he's assuring me that nothing's <laughs> going on. He's trying to get me back on these pay-per-views. He has no idea why Tony Khan doesn't want me on the pay-per-views, but I'm getting no answers and no relief. So then my mental health began to really take a serious... And Tony, it's obvious he doesn't get back to people. Like, he just avoids it until it becomes a real thing. And, yeah downturn um this was really troubling me and it was affecting my relationships at home it was obviously affecting my work and i was getting worse and worse and beginning of for all you idiots who are like man he kevin kelly was getting old and past his time like he couldn't remember their names and he's botching all you guys talking this is what he's going through Oh, we need to be, the whole world wants to be sensitive and AEW for everyone and we're the inclusive company and all this stuff and then look how how you'll shame this dude because he's a legend for botching some names when he's not even being booked. He's he's not being booked. HR is not getting back to him. People are calling him QAnon. He doesn't know if he's got to sit next to the, these at a desk. He doesn't know what's going. He doesn't know who thinks. He doesn't know who's saying what. If his job's on the line, he's all anxious. He's not being booked. So he's like, well, what's going on? Like, we're trying to talk to Tony. Tony won't get back to him. In- insane, man. Just insane. March. It was the weekend of Sting's last show. I wanted to be there. I wasn't booked. And I went off. And I went off on social media. And I called the poor HR lady and left her a message. And it was, I'm sure it was stiff. I don't remember what I said, Eric, but I'm sure it was stiff. Were you sober? And yes, I was. All right. I as was, long as it wasn't like one of those calls at you know midnight or one o'clock in the morning nope. after you've had a bottle or two of wine. <laughs> nope, it was it was <laughs> that bite night. you in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I just again and oh, I know what it was that finally set me off. The week before on on Collision, I had done a little bit with uh, Willie Hobbs. I think Will Hobbs is the man. I think he's great. And Will Hobbs. Let's go, Will Hobbs. Shut him out. I love Powerhouse Hobbs. Hobbs was in an ODQ match against Sammy Guevara. We set up the spot to where he walks in front of me. He thinks he hears me say something. And he's, what did you say? I didn't say anything about you. No, get up. What did you say? Did I hear that right? Give me your belt. What? Give me your belt. And he starts taking my belt off so he could whip Sammy Guevara with. It. So it's a good little spot. And I, I see like a, you know, a fan made a little thing and put it on YouTube. But I'm reading the comments just, you know, because they're right underneath. And, oh, QAnon conspiracy wacko. Right wing, th- this, that, the other thing. Trump loving suck ass. I'm like, I can't get away from this. So I blew my stack and about two o'clock in the afternoon, I leave stiff voicemail. And in the meantime, I'm trying to get like in with the psychiatrist 
that they tout as, you know, we have this mental health counseling as a team. Well, I need help, guys. Oh, yeah, it's me. I do that job, too. That's why you couldn't get a hold of me, because I was actually ready. I'm busy being CEO, GM. Oh, I'm an in-ring competitor now. Uh, if you didn't see my neck brace and my awesome tombstone I took. And, yeah, I'm also the counselor. So uh, leave me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Ha <laughs> ha. Jesus. And I'm telling you I need help. I've told you I'm, I'm losing my, my mental health is suffering. I've told you this time and time again and so i on my own i'm trying to find these psychiatrists out and contact them and tell them what's going on finally i did and talking to them all day sunday and monday and we're supposed to fly because we were taping tv thursday that week so i was flying out thursday morning to atlanta and uh wednesday the 6th i got let go because of the what i was saying online publicly about the company and the voicemail message that I had left for the nice HR lady. So what are you going to do? You suing them? Yeah, of course. That's right there. No one is talking Go about ahead. this. There isn't one dirt sheet. There isn't one anything. Like, he's about to sue them, dude. You know? Where's all the marks being like, oh, they're getting sued? Like, Tony's... And, and also, Tony's getting sued for... Or like the Jaguars are getting sued or something for some crazy, I don't know, someone went down on a plane or something. Yeah, hey, it wasn't me this time. I swear to God, God. <laughs> I swear, pal, it wasn't me. No, no, no. I was busy playing with my kittens on, a, on another private plane. I assure you, no paralegals were present, pal. But yeah, man. It's unfortunate. Dirt sheets, where are they at? Tell After. me about Tony Khan backstage. I mean, what, you know, I've been back. Who, me? No, I'm great. Oh, uh, don't talk about NDA. Didn't you sign one? I, I think I did two AEW shows early on. Um, didn't really spend a lot of time backstage. My impression is that Tony Khan is completely, has no understanding at all of creative, has no understanding at all of television production, has no understanding at all of how to format a show. Am I right? Nope. Am I wrong? He's got good people around him that he doesn't utilize. His vision of what wrestling is, for me, works best on a small scale. Um, people always wonder, why did PWG stay small? Well, they knew, I think, they knew that if they went big, that it would get stale fast. It's what happened to ECW. If you guys watch the ECW A&E biography, that just, or any, everyone knows the story of ECW, but that's what happened to them. They, they got TV, they got bigger, and it just killed them. It's not, you can't do that. You know what I mean? And WWE is funding them the whole time. So Tony Khan was such a fan. Everyone's like, oh, ECW. Yeah, WWE funded that the whole time. Paul Heyman says it. I've said it a billion times. He outright says it on this A&E biography that at one point he went to Vince and was like, can you give me 500 grand until the next? And Vince is like, hmm, all right, I'll do it. And he just like gave him $500,000 to get to their next show or whatever. Like this is in the middle of it all. So ECW was like what TNA can be for wwe or what aew can be for wwe but just basically we talked about earlier in the show wwe's working with mary gold and they're expanding like they're not going to absorb all these promotions right noah and tna they're not going to absorb everything they're looking to go to mexico and puerto rico what they're going to do is just let these feds exist and then just have them be feeder systems to them you know just ovw it up again and then nxt can be where they sort of test. It's almost like the they're they're the tryouts or they're the developmentals for the developmental. You know what I mean? And it makes sense to do that because. And what did I guy? What did I tell you guys? NXT should not be on TV, right? Anyone who comes into WWE should be doing TV somewhere else or should be not featured at all. Like I I don't want to see their work until they you know are on the main roster. Play me vignettes and get me hype for them or with the internet now it's a little different. So you bring all of that internet hype sort of into NXT because the mainstream translates differently, which is what Kevin Kelly's sort of saying. Like what Tony's trying to do is a smaller scale thing. So what's NXT doing? Sort of the AEW thing, but they're doing it on a smaller scale. Makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? They're being ultra progressive in NXT. If you guys haven't noticed what AEW claim to be, oh, they're super progressive in NXT. And what are they doing? It's like a smaller scale. Let's work with smaller promotions. Feeder. Let's use NXT as like, the entry barrier to feed talent to WWE from all these other promotions. It's genius. And they had to stay small 
to keep it special, to keep it niche. He wants to he wants to appeal to a niche audience with his vision of wrestling, but he wants he he thinks he can convince the people to watch on a grand scale. Nope. And the other thing that he's done is he's made himself the face of the company. Unbelievable. Um, and this is great. you know he's the one he's he's the one that's going now on TV interviews. He and I saw he and uh, uh, Darby Allen were doing like a, a TV promotion, lo- local morning news somewhere. It's like, man, that's not his skill set. No, I thought he was a numbers guy, an analytics guy. That doesn't I, appear to be his skill set either, because anybody who is an analytics expert would look at the analytics for AEW and go. I may have thought that I was on the right track, but I am clearly on the wrong track because the numbers not only tell me so, they scream at me at the tops of their little number voices each and every week. Mm-hmm. So how can this guy who is supposedly supposedly an analytics expert not look at the analytics of his own show and go, wait a minute, we're doing something wrong, let's shift gears. How does that not happen? Well, numbers can lie, Eric. You can you can skew the numbers any way you want. Creative uh, accounting, even means, those numbers don't lie, bro. I, mean, I know, but if you if you choose to look at the glass half full, you choose to look at the glass half full. That's you know, and again, that's where Belter and and that's what he does. You know, he'll Dave getting called out by Kevin Kelly. Let's go. He'll spin the numbers to to make them not smell so bad. Um, I think that that can be done. It's, what's, it, the mor- what, what's the morale like backstage? It's the same, you know, it, it, as has been reported, what I always noticed was that there were a lot of people that were there that weren't being used, that wanted to be used, that had creative ideas, but that weren't getting through. So there would be a conga line of people outside Tony's office um, waiting to get in to see him. So see? And nothing, nothing wrong. Oh, no, this is great. And he's going, nothing wrong with that. But do you see there's a conga line of people outside of Tony's office? They all want to see him. Oh, I'm just overwhelmed here. I got to go see the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, God damn it, man. You know, Cornette was right. What can you say? Shout out Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Cornette, you know? Shout out the castle, man. You guys were right the whole time. And we knew it. We knew it. And PWT's been right. And the good PWT universe has been right. And a lot of people are starting to wake up to that now. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's silly and it's not conducive. of. Oh, come on now, Eric. You don't think that it's if it's healthy, it's good for the I don't know. Is it does if AEW being healthy means like just flushing money down the toilet, getting people hurt for a lighter schedule, like you're on a lighter schedule, but you're getting hurt all like everyone's getting hurt in that company. It's not growing. It's not doing anything. It's been like. I mean, five years, it's half a decade. I mean, it's time, man. You know what I mean? That's a good chunk of time. Like, and it's, I don't know, man. It just seems, hopefully, they turn it around. We all say that. We all got to try and preface it and be positive. But it's it's just unfortunate, you know? So if it being healthy means, like, the sickos and all that, I mean, I don't know if that is a good thing anymore. You know, I love to see the graps, too. But it's like, man, I thought by now we would be at, like, I don't know, man. The start of AW was lit. You know, Cody saw the writing on the wall. It's just, we're not saying this to be negative. It's just true. And I know that there's different tastes in wrestling. Like if you just like to throw on matches and watch them, that's great. But if AEW didn't exist, you would still be able to see that. AEW would be much stronger if it was just an indie show. If they just ran indies with his signed talent. And then he just randomly, like not randomly, but like once every two months did a pay-per-view. That's like a super indie. Once every three months, you know, it's like a super indie. And then maybe they get a little TV after five years. But no, they just went ass backwards. They just tried to be Tony McCon, tried to be WWE light right off the bat. And then all, their only thing they go is, well, we have long, awesome athletic matches where everyone gives their everything. And it's just like, damn, you know, that's not enough, you know? Oh, well, we're doing stories now. Look at the learning tree. Look at the buck stuff. Oh, that's sports entertainment. And you guys don't like it. So you don't, it's just elementary level. It's story. A lot of it doesn't even make sense. Most of his stories do not make sense. Like everyone's tweeners. You don't know who to cheer for. Oh, they have to be, hold your hand and tell you who to cheer for. Sorry. Then everyone. Yes. And it's like, yeah. And that's not shameful, dude, because like in Spider-Man, do they hold your hand and tell you Spider-Man's a good guy? And Dr. Octopus is a bad guy. Yeah. Yep. They explain it. 
They explain it all along the way. They tell you why, who, where, when, how, all that. We don't get none of that with AEW, man. Or it's like this happens and then this happens and then this happens. And right. That's not how you write stories. Stories don't aren't just like a series of things happening. Okay. What a story is, is like, this happens because of this, you know, this happened and then that happened. So this happened. Right. And, and to get there, they had to do this, you know, like, God damn it. It's, it's so it's been done for decades, years, millennia. God damn it. People have been telling stories. Tony Khan's not good at that. So move over, let someone else do it. It's crazy with that. But I don't ever remember a long line of wrestlers wanting to get in to see Vince. There were people to talk to. You could talk to a Pat Patterson and Jerry Briscoe. You could talk to a Jack Lanza. There were agents that were respected that had Vince's ear that could take your message and say, hey. See, so Vince didn't just listen to any and everyone. But he had people like Jack Lanza, like the, the various people Kevin Kelly named, who are let people with great minds and brains. Obviously, look at where WWE's at, who had Vince's ear. So if it was important, so Vince trusted them to be the filter. If it's important enough to them, they'll get it to Vince and then they'll it'll get worked out from there. So Tony doesn't even have that. He's just there's just a lineup of people. He's the final say. There's no one he trusts in his ear, as Kevin Kelly says. He goes, yo. There's people surrounding him who are who are awesome. He doesn't listen to them though, which is what everybody said. So every we're all right. So and so's not happy with what's going on, and Vince would say, "Tell him this to placate him, or bring him in, and I'll talk to him." And Vince then could put the Vince whammy on them, and everything. Would the be Vince done. whammy. <laughs> he put the Vince whammy on you. He, oh, you'd go in as pissed as could be, and. He, you'd come out and he's patting you on the back and shaking your hand. What changed? Uh, nothing really. I'm just, I'm just happy that is, now. That is so true. Yeah, that is such a true truism. The Vince whammy, because you know, you, I've been there myself. Yeah, I'd spend two days going. When I sit down in front of Vince, this is what I'm going to say. This is how I'm going to say it. These are the points mm -hmm. I'm going to make, and I'm. By God, I'm going to make my point. I'm not leaving that room till I make my point. <laughs> and I leave that room, and I don't know if I made my point or not, but I feel so much better about myself. Yes. Nothing changed, to your nope. point. Nothing changed. But God, I feel good. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so there was never that level of satisfaction with the wrestlers in, in AEW. And there was just a lot of people tripping over each other in catering and otherwise, uh, with a lot of guys and girls just – not sure of what their place is, which leads to unsettled, which means when they do get a shot, what are they going to do? They're not going to work from a place of confidence. They're not going to work from a place of, I know my business and I know my value. Watch me go out and protect my own assets and do nothing. Again, the object of wrestling is to let the audience think that there is pain being inflicted, pain being absorbed, but not really. Well, no, now I'm going to throw myself on my head to get over because that's what Tony likes. That's the perception. I'm going to do something wild and crazy here to get over. And invariably, it doesn't work and it doesn't get over. And it leads to, and it leads to a lot of injuries. It leads to injury. So wrestlers are throwing themselves on their head and doing crazy because that's what Tony likes. Yeah. This is great. Man, dude. Uh, this and does he sound sour grapes? He sounds genuine to me. He just sounds like a man telling his experience who's been around the world and who's experienced different companies and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Man, this and no one's talking about any of this. No one's quoting this. No one's bringing this up on any other channels. It's crazy, man. It's crazy to me. That's why PWT's goaded here. Let's let's keep listening. I'm just intrigued. Threes, which you know, becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy of when I get healthy, then I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to do more because that's what he likes. That FTR. Oh, I'm working through injuries and working injured. Now I got to take time off again. Jesus Christ, man. And then he's just talking to everyone. Is Kevin Kelly an old mad podcaster, QAnon, Dex? And it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's dysfunctional, but it's just not functioning the way it should be, at least when I was there. Um, because again, there were a lot, there was more unhappy talents, more talents with just like, what are you doing tonight? I have no idea. 
well, it's five o'clock and we're going on the air live in a couple of hours. Well, yeah, that's why I'm waiting. Okay. You know, it was like, it was a lot of that. We got one more question here before we let you go. Came in late. BP2K Uni wants to know, I just tuned in. This was for you, Kevin. How much mm-hmm. collaboration did you have with Callus? So that's about New Japan or whatever. Round of applause for Kevin Kelly and Eric Bischoff. 